So David, we're in the middle of a major election campaign here in this country, in our union as well. Um, what would you say are some of the major issues facing Christians when it comes to voting? Well, certainly it's the conversation of the moment. Without question, the Brexit story dominates, whether we like it or not. The other issues about how the economy is run, the economy, the other issues about uh, morality, about the uh, morality of leaders, who do you trust? Mm -hmm. Other issues about taxation, who's going to tax me more or less? These are matters that directly concern us. And I'm a Christian. Sure. Don't I think Christianly when I vote? Mm -hmm. Well, you've made this your editorial for the latest messenger that is coming out, and you've posed a number of interesting questions, but you also mentioned Romans 13, and you talk about the Christian's responsibility to our local authority and how we ought to respond to that. In light of the election, do you feel that as Christians we have an intrinsic need, a desire to really get involved in politics? Well, the first thing that Romans 13 tells me is that we respect authority. Mm. Paul wanted his followers, followers of Christ, in Rome to respect the governing authority, a pagan authority. He was actually very, uh, almost agitated about this mm. because the Jews in Rome were almost wanting to rise up against the Roman authorities. So there was a sort of very clear statement, hey, no uprising in Rome in the name of Christ. That's completely off the agenda. He was also wanted to keep unity between Jews and Gentiles in his church in Rome. And so respect the authorities, whoever you are, from wherever you're from, even when they don't do things that are aligned with the principles of God. So how can a Christian respect the authorities if they don't line up with the principles of God, or i.e. The, the commandments of God? Well, first of all, I do everything in my power to keep the law and obey the law of the land. There are occasions in history when the law of the land has gone against the principles of God and there are the right, there is the right to protest civil disobedience because you are, feel so strong about what's gone on that's the wrong, you must say what is right on behalf of God. Mm. And so this general election is really an opportunity for Christians, Adventists, to be able to really look at the bigger picture and to see um, you know, the politicians, what they stand for, what they believe, and use their voting right to vote accordingly to individuals who align their views according to what may align for Christian values. Let's put it like this, to take a step back. Mm. Just take a step back from all the parties and politics and to reflect about what's actually going on, to try and discern truth from error, fact from fiction, and to help um, our members, and as a faith-sharing tool for friends, we've produced this edition of Focus. What's the bigger picture? Mm -hmm. And this, this Focus edition is real-time relevant to this general election and what's going on now. Mm -hmm. But it's non-partisan. You would not expect anything sure, else. Sure. But it's to try and help you and me and our friends work through the fog. Mm -hmm. So what, what are some of the topics that are discussed in the Focus magazine? Well, let me start with the first topic and the last topic. The first topic gives some rules for your encounter in the election booth. Mm -hmm. The last article gives some prayer guidance mm -hmm. in the election booth, both written by people called Mike and uh, they're friends of mine. One was a teacher and we were both in the cl same class as the uh, teacher uh, many, many years ago. And the, these guys speak with authority. Mm. They know what they're talking about. Mm. And they've been engaged in trying to connect with uh, politics for many, many years as Christians, as faithful Christians, and as faithful Adventists, mm. I'd go on to say. So this magazine is obviously available. It's now, you can get it electronically as well. It'll come out yep. in the next few days. It's, uh, the print edition is arriving mm. in uh, with the messenger this, this weekend. Mm. So going back to the whole question about the election, um, we've been... The manifestos are now coming out and we can see where each party stands for. Um, for. For the Christian today who looks at what's going on, with all the situation with Brexit and going back and forth, um, people who are disillusioned with voting, they'll think, well, you know, 
who's who's speaking the truth these days? Okay, I can tell you that I'm disillusioned yeah. with the party political system right now. Yeah. I've never been like that before in my life. Mm. Right, left, or centre. As someone who's wants to engage with politics for many, many years, taken a keen interest, I've never felt so down about the current situation, about who's got the best, who's telling the truth, who's the right character to lead, right? But I'm still going to vote in a few days' time. Okay, so it's not voting. Are you, with someone who does not, does not, who chooses not to vote, abstain, will they be then exercising their, their right in really abstaining from all political issues? Absolutely, that is a, that is a right that should be respected. Mm. To abstain is to make a statement. I'm mm -hmm. just not going to vote for anybody, and that's mm -hmm. got to be respected. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I want to use great discernment in voting for somebody because I actually want to speak truth to power. Mm -hmm. It's my very mm -hmm. clear, tangible way of saying right now, well, I'm going to vote for him because that lot over there, I don't agree with. And I won't agree with everything that my candidate says, but I'm looking at the broad brushstrokes. Mm -hmm. What is their value system overall? Mm. And I think it's also important to recognise that politicians may be portrayed in the media in a certain light, in a certain way, and we may not get a full understanding of who your local potential MP might be. So it's important to really know who they are and find out what they believe in, in a local level as well. Yes. And even, I would recommend going to go to some meetings. Local meetings probably give you a better picture of the politician than through the screen, the television screen. Mm -hmm. And I would say very, very clearly, as, as a caution, um, Facebook. Mm -hmm. I will not believe anything I read on Facebook about any politician because it is being used and manipulated uh, well, 24 go for all social media, though, wouldn't it? Um, well, I hope that if you and I post something on social media, we'll say something uh, <laughs> genuine and authentic. Yeah. But in terms of... The, Facebook right now being used um, manipulatively 24-7 to demonise the other. Mm. I just can't trust Well, that's it. where discernment comes in yes, for everybody right. to yeah. be able to decipher yeah. the truth from error as best as possible. Yes, that's right. That's okay. right. Well, we'll see what happens. We're just a few days away from the election. So we pray that God's will will be done. Finally, Richard, can I just say, yeah. focus is not primarily for the Adventist community. Sure. It's for Adventists to share with their friends, mm. to turn everyday conversation into good news. Yeah. And there's more copies of these available from the Stammer Press, 01476591700, to order more, to share with your friends over the next couple of weeks. <laughs> you got that in very quickly. I, did. I don't time. use the advertisement, I had to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you very much, David. Cheers. And look You're out welcome. for this magazine. Thank, thank you. you.